Hi, my name's Robin. I've been involved with the Entelbucker breed since 2009 as club secretary, and I've owned them for about three years now with my boy Basil. I do show him, we do a bit of agility, we dabbled in obedience. So we've got Basil here who's just over three years old now. We've got Bella, she'll be four this year, and we've got Little Pip. There's the two types of the breed. So we've got Basil, who's definitely the more slender, athletic type, shall we say, and a bit smaller. Then we've got Bella, who's heavier, more stocky type. And they're a medium, short-haired breed, and they are longer than they are high. It's a ratio of eight heights to ten in length. They're always tricolour, which is the predominantly black, white and tan. Short coat, it's a double coat underneath. It's very minimal grooming. They're, I have to say they're one of the easiest breeds I've had grooming-wise. There's just nothing to it, really. They also have very clean dogs. They were originally bred as cattle herders. For six months of the year, they would have been up in the Alps with just their shepherds looking after the cattle herding, which is why they get such a really strong bond with their primary carers. But other than that, they also were bred to pull carts, which we have done with the breeds and did that last year actually at a fun day. They were also sort of general farm dog, watchdog, primarily a cattle herder, but whatever they turn their mind to, you can train them to do it. We tend to find that there's almost two types of the personality. You get the ones that are a bit more aloof of strangers. Basil and Bella, you know, if they don't know someone, they're going to be a bit guarded, a bit like, who are you? I'm a bit unsure of you. Whereas you get polar opposites, like Pip, we just love everybody. Like, oh yeah, you're my friend, you're my friend. Obviously with him, with his people, he loves to come up, have his cuddles. If he had it his way, he'd be in bed with you. Some people would think that they're a noisy breed. Basil is a noisy dog, I can't lie. He'll bark when somebody's at the door. If you're out and about and he sees something that he decides you need to know about, he's going to bark to let you know. And that comes into the general's watchdog thing. But as soon as you have him off the lead, he's a pretty quiet dog. You know, you can play ball with him and he's not going to be going bah, 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 bah. In the house, generally, if we're just sort of sitting down watching TV, he's happy just to lay down and just be quiet. But obviously, if you start playing with him and if you wind him up, you're going to have chat, 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 because he does like to let you know that he's about. They are good family dogs. They're great with children, as long as they're brought up correctly with them. The only thing do bear in mind, they're sturdy dogs. They are active, and if anything, just through wanting to play, they can knock them over if you're not careful. So you do have to keep your eye on them, especially with the whippy tails. We do have to watch out sometimes a bit of the livestock, because you've got the herding instinct. They are good with other dogs when you come across them in the park. For some of them, it does really suit them to be a single dog because obviously that bond that they have with their owner, it's so intense. You do find that these guys they don't tend to like being on their own for long lengths of time, which most dogs, you shouldn't be leaving them for, say, more than four hours anyway. But you'll find they're mostly happy just so long as they're with you, they're happy. Now, exercise, it does seem to vary. I mean, they will take as much as you will give them. If you can give them a good hour a day, then you're fine. Obviously, with Beno puppies, you do need to be careful, the same as any breed with the growth plates. But I did find when he was the adolescent teenage years, I did need to work him or and give him things to focus his mind on because he'd get bored easily. And so I had to do a lot of training games with him, give him jobs to do in the house. I just had to keep his mind active to keep him happy. Once he's had his run, he'll quite happily go to sleep under the table or wherever he falls, basically. They are generally really easy to train. I mean, my, I've done agility of my, my boy, which he loves it, and I know Bella's done some agility as well. Obedience, so we did a lot of obedience with Bella, I know, and she excels at it. There's also Cleo, she does search and rescue. Training him for the show ring, believe it or not, was probably the hardest because I had to get him used to being gone over by strangers and that's just not in his nature to want to be. But on the whole, very easy to train, very intelligent dogs and if you're not careful, they'll train you. On the whole, they do like their food, but there's always going to be an exception to the rule and Basil's the exception to the rule. He's not bothered by food really at all. But the majority, they're quite happy for you to give them their treats, 
but as a breed, they do like their play. They do like ball play, frisbee play, any sort of play which you can throw it, play fetch. They love it. So you do need to be careful, especially when they're puppies and training them, not to be ball possessive. We've trained them, so it's a ball, it's a toy. It's not yours, others can take it. Whereas if you're not careful, they will be like, it's my ball. I have known a couple or two be very ball possessive. But on the whole, as long as you, as long as you train them, you know, you have a happy dog. They did. And it's great though, because you know, the ball, you can get him to do anything for that ball. So if you want him to, I don't know, sit, come back, whatever. If you've got the ball, he'll do it. Okay, the bitches molt twice a year, obviously with their seasons. The dogs tend to have one heavy molt. But obviously if you do get a change in the weather, then you will get a bit of it. It's nothing too much. On a whole, they're very, very easy to groom. For example, when I take him to the dog shows, I just give him a really quick once over. If he gets his paws mucky, then I give him a little wipe off. But it's quite handy because he, he looks after himself. Health-wise, we test for the hip dysplasia, which is a nice easy one. We just get an x-ray done, goes off to the BVA for scoring. That one's nice and easy. We also do a, just a basic heart function test to make sure that they're free from heart murmurs or any defects. Just getting the vet to listen to their hearts and just say they're free from murmurs or anything. We check for PRA, which is a DNA test. So you can just get a swab or a blood test done, send it off to the labs, and then they can confirm it. We do annual cataract tests. We test now for, we do a gonioscopy as well to test for glaucoma. And the other test which there is is the ectopic urethra, which is something we're currently working on getting done in the UK. To be fair, they're quite healthy. That's part of the reason why I switched to this breed is they're quite healthy. If anybody's thinking of owning the breed, then I think the best bit about it is, is get in touch with the club. Because what we do as a club is we hold a central puppy list, but before anybody's allowed on a list, we clean them up with someone who lives nearby and we say right go out with them go for a walk go meet the dogs in the house and then you can really get a feel for the dog we say come along to our events meet the breed chat to the owners then you can really get a good informed decision of whether it's the right dog for you because they're a great breed but they aren't for everyone because if you don't want an active dog don't get an entel bucker i think they're great ideally i want to have a second one and i wouldn't be without them i mean they're a breed that once you've had one they get under your skin, so you don't want to be a one and you, you want to have more. They're kind of more than a dog, if this makes sense. They are part of the family. They're almost human. They are active. You do need to work, and they're intelligent as well. So if, if you've not had dogs before, then they're probably not your most ideal first pet, shall we say. You need to put the work into this breed to get the maximum out of them. So if you put the work in, you're going to have a, you're going to have a best friend for life. If you don't put the work in, you're going to have the best pain for, for life. There's 69 of the breed in the UK at the minute, so they are rare. So they're not easy to get hold of. You will have to be prepared to wait. And you will get stopped in the street a lot and asked what they are. And the most common thing we get asked is, oh, is it a beagle? Or is it a rotty cross? Has it got Doberman in it? Is it a mini St Bernard? You get asked all sorts, but the most common is, it's a beagle and you will get people tell you that you have a beagle <laughs> and you know you can tell them that no he's not a beagle but I've had beagle owners stop me and tell me that I have a beagle so it's quite funny really <laughs> it's one of those things you just get used to.